Hey guys, this is Spencer with Canine Sports Psych, and today I'm going to be joined by a few dogs we're going to introduce a little bit later, Harvey and Daisy. Today we're going to be showing you how to get your dog into a canine support sack dog carrier. We get a lot of questions about this process and we want to make sure that you and your dog have the best experience possible. A few things you'll need before you start. One, your dog's favorite treats. Two, a calm, quiet place free of distraction. And three, obviously your canine support sack. Today we're going to be using a couple different models, however, regardless of the model that you use, these steps will work with any of our carriers. Now you want to make sure to follow these steps every time you use the carrier. If you do these steps out of order or you miss some of these steps, it could confuse your dog and could make this process more difficult. Remember, be patient. Some dogs will get it on the first time and some dogs will take a little bit of training. If your dog is hesitant at first, that's totally normal. But just like any other learned dog behavior, practice makes perfect. Okay, let's get started. We're joined here with Dumpster Daisy, obviously the founder of Canine Sports Sack. So she's been in the Canine Sports Sack since she was just a puppy. She's gonna be showing us today how to get into the dog carrier. Now, just for reference, Daisy's kind of a mutt. She's a mix of, of a lot of different dog breeds, but she weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when starting to get your dog into the Canine Sports Sack, you know, get your dog just to sit or lay down next to you. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just take your carrier, unzip it, unbuckle it. You wanna get it opened and lay it out nice and flat, just like so. That way you can start to get your dog inside of the dog carrier. Now what we recommend is starting with your dog's front paws. And so that's what we're gonna do here first. We're gonna, you can get your dog to sit or lay down if they know that command. The other thing you do, just pick them up, place them right on the dog carrier. Once you get your dog sitting or laying down on the open carrier, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is just take their front paws one at a time, work them through the front armholes on the dog carrier. Once you get your dog's front legs through the leg holes one at a time, Buckle the collar enclosure around the back of the dog's neck. This will help your dog not to pull their legs back inside the carrier. The next thing you'll need to do is make sure your dog is laying down or in the sitting position. You're gonna to wanna to take their back legs and just tuck them inside the dog carrier. Once your dog's legs and tail are in the carrier, carefully zip up the carrier to the top. Once the carrier is zipped to the top, we recommend unclipping your collar enclosure. And if your bag has a zipper loop, we recommend threading your buckle through the zipper loop. Now all of our bags come equipped with non-slip zippers, but this is just an extra safety feature just to ensure your zipper doesn't come down when using the carrier. Once you're at this point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your collar enclosure is nice and snug. You want it snug enough to where it's not obviously choking the dog, but tight enough to where your dog's shoulders aren't gonna come up out of the bag. This will ensure your dog stays in the carrier. Sometimes you just have to take the little loop, pull it, tighten it up, and then cinch down and that'll make your collar enclosure nice and snug. Next, you're gonna to wanna to clip the lumbar straps and cinch them tight to support your dog's back while in the carrier. If your carrier has a detachable storage bag, make sure to fasten it to the carrier for additional support. Your lumbar straps are just found on the back of the bag. And you just wanna make sure those are, those are nice and snug across the back. Tighten your side cinch straps. Those are located on each side of the carrier. That'll prevent your dog from leaning backwards in the carrier and just make it more comfortable for you and for your dog. Last thing we recommend doing before putting your carrier on your back is clipping your dog into the bag. Each canine sports sack comes equipped with a carabiner safety clip and you can either clip that to your dog's collar or you can move that carabiner safety clip to the back of the bag 
Most models will have another loop where you can move that. If your dog wears a harness, you can clip them in with a harness. Now that your dog's inside the carrier, all your straps are nice and tight and snug, your safety clips on, the last step is to get the carrier on your back. One of the things that people struggle with the most is getting their dog on their back once they have their dog in the carrier. We're gonna just show you a simple method you can use by yourself. Although there's not necessarily a perfect way to do it, we recommend this being the safest way and we'll show you an alternative method when we work with Harvey here in just a second. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just take your dog, set him up on some kind of a flat elevated surface. We recommend before doing this, so you have your straps all the way undone. We recommend just holding the backpack loop and with whatever arm you're gonna put through your shoulder strap, you're gonna to wanna to hold with the opposite arm, thread your arm through the shoulder strap and simply lift up. Once you have one strap on, simply thread your arm through the other strap. We recommend grabbing your shoulder straps and lifting up. You want your dog to be positioned high on your back and then you can simply tighten those shoulder straps. If your carrier has a chest clip, do your chest clip, tighten that up but your dog should be positioned nice and high so they sit and look up over your shoulder. This is Harvey. He's a one-year-old Brittany Spaniel and weighs 40 pounds. He's still a puppy and has a ton of energy. Here's a few tips for any of you with puppies or dogs with a little extra high energy. Harvey gets a little squirmy when I try to put him in the carrier, but after I get him on my back and he calms down, he has a great time. Now, you always wanna make sure when you're putting a dog in a canine sports sack, you approach them from the front and work your way backwards. What we mean by that is you always start with the paws and then work down towards the dog. It's really important that you approach a dog from the front so they can see what's going on. Oftentimes, people will make the mistake of trying to put their dog's bottom into the carrier and their dog can't see what's going on Therefore, their dog gets up and walks away from the carrier and you're not successful. In these next clips, you'll see another example of how to get a dog into a canine sports sack dog carrier. In these clips, we're using the Rover 2 model. As you see here with this first clip, we start with Harvey's paws. You can notice sometimes he pulls them out, that's okay. Some dogs don't necessarily love their paws being touched if you haven't handled their feet a lot. Once you get their paws through, again, make sure you clip the collar enclosure around the dog's neck. This will ensure that your dog doesn't back their way out of the dog carrier. Once you get your dog's back legs and tail inside the carrier, sometimes dogs will remain standing or even stand up during that process. That's totally normal. What you're gonna wanna do is give them the sit and sometimes you'll even need to get them to lay down inside of the bag. You'll see here with Harvey, once we get everything in the carrier, he kind of melts down into the carrier, and now we can move on to the next step. You're gonna go ahead and zip up the bag. Make sure when you're zipping up the bag, you don't zip up any of your dog's fur. Most of our bags come equipped with a fur flap, that way you don't zip your dog's fur in there. At this point, once your carrier's all the way zipped up, we recommend undoing your collar enclosure and sliding the collar enclosure buckle through the zipper loop. All of our bags come equipped with non-slip zippers, but this is another safety feature we've added to ensure the zipper doesn't come down when in use. You want that tight enough to where it's not choking your dog, but tight enough to where your dog's shoulders will not come up out of the bag when in use. Once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do up all your other buckles on the carrier. Typically our carriers come with lumbar straps, either one or two across the back. Make sure those are nice and snug. Those will support your dog's back as well as the zipper. All of our bags come equipped with a side cinch strap you'll wanna tighten those down. Some of our carriers will come with an additional storage bag across the back of the canine sports sack. If you have that, you'll wanna go ahead and buckle those buckles up, make those nice and tight. That'll act as even more support for your dog's back. The last thing we recommend doing is securing your dog into the canine sports sack with our carabiner safety clip. You can either use the attachment for the collar or as seen in the previous clip, you can use the attachment for the harness. 
The last step is to get the carrier on your back. Another method you can try is the two-person method. Have a friend carefully lift the backpack from behind underneath the shoulder straps. Feed your arms and shoulders through the shoulder straps and place the carrier on your back. The person behind should lift the dog from the base so that it's easier to position the dog on your back. The carrier should be as high up on your back as possible. Once the carrier is in this position, tighten the shoulder straps. This is how your carrier should look while on your back. Don't panic if your dog's a little nervous the first time you try to put them in the carrier. That's totally normal. Just be patient, stay calm, give them plenty of treats, <laughs> and belly scratches to help them feel comfortable and safe being around the new carrier. And again, practice makes perfect. The more you use the carrier, the smoother the process will be for you and your dog. And pretty soon, they'll be begging you for a ride in the canine sports sack because they know how fun it is to be inside of a canine sports sack dog carrier. If you have any questions, please feel free to visit the contact us page on our website and our customer service team will always be happy to help. Follow us on social media to stay updated on all things canine sports sack. Thanks for watching and remember, no dog left behind.